I wanted to do kind of a, like a stigma video, um, basically saying I live with a stigma over my head every single day. Every single day of my life, there's a stigma over my head that I'm a felon. Hi, if you're new here and you don't know me, my name is Jamie, and yes, I do have a felon. Um, one felony, and it was a bad night, a bad mistake in my life, and I am not that same person anymore, and that is my whole journey that I am trying to share with you guys on this channel to show you guys that you can change and you can bring your life back together and things do get better. So I wanted to share that and just share my journey and I'm not ashamed of my past. Is it pretty? No. Is it something that I'm proud of? No. But is it something that's mine and that I'm going to have to deal with for the rest of my life? Yes. And I will deal with it. And that's just how it is. So we're dealing with it, you know? So I just wanted to explain to you guys, like, if you don't know what a stigma is, or I don't know, I don't know how else to word it. Like, I don't think there's another word to explain it. But basically, it's like you, someone just judges you based off of something about you, right? So I'm a felon. So someone hears that, like if you're new here and you don't know my backstory or my story at all, and you can just be like, oh my God, gross. She's a criminal. Like, but you don't know me and you don't know actually what happened or that I was never even a criminal to begin with. Like, it's just, it's, and the thing is, is living with a stigma, it's happens to so many people. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on the world in the world right now. And um, it, it just really shows how much uh, a stereotype. Yes, a stereotype. Thank you. Um, a stereotype is like you get stereotyped or you have stigmas on you that are constantly. They define you in society, and it's frustrating because right now with all of the craziness going on in the world, and I'm not sure if I can talk about it a lot or not, like the thing in Minneapolis and the lady in New York, all of that, right? So that stuff, it's stereotyping. It's fucked up. It's horrible. And it's, you know, and not just, I don't know how to explain it, like not just certain people go through it. Like, I am stereotyped. I have stigmas on my back. Everybody, I'm sure, not everybody, but lots of people, I'm sure, have experienced that. I know millions of people have experienced it. And it's just, I, I want to share how I, it feels on my end, on, like, how I went through it, because I can only speak for myself. But um, I know that many, many, many people feel the same way I feel and feel just as frustrated as I feel. And I want to just spread awareness on that. And um, I know I'm just a little white girl, but, you know, it. it that's I, I am a felon. So people automatically think that I'm just a piece of shit, crackhead criminal. Like, that's literally what they think of me. I mean, I will have, like, I don't know. So here's an example. I was in this church group um, a few years back, and there was this lady who... She was so sweet to me, and I loved her, and she was so kind, and I I was always hanging out with her, and, like, you know, anytime we had something to do with, like, the, the community, the, the church community, like, I was helping her, and I just volunteered there all the time, and, um, yes, I had community service, too, that I was trying to get done, but I just did it because I, I enjoyed to do it, too. I obviously went to a place that I was going to enjoy. I wasn't just going to go somewhere and be miserable, right? So, I don't know. Long story long, this lady ended up finding out, word of mouth, I guess, that I was a felon and that I lived at the pre-release. And she wouldn't talk to me. She wouldn't come in the same room as me. She, I mean, it literally went 180. 100% as a felon, as an addict, Having a black husband and child, it's all stigmas and stereotypes. It's shitty. Yes, it's so shitty. So that lady, literally, she knew who I was for me that day she met me, right? Which is who I was. Like, my past doesn't define me. Who I, What I look like doesn't define me. Who I am on the inside is what defines me. And that's what I showed her. And she liked me, I thought. I mean, I thought we were great. 
And then all of a sudden, she found out from someone else that I lived at the pre-release and I was a felon. So she no longer wanted to associate with me, wanted to have anything to do with me. And um, it was actually, like, really ugly. And I was very, very upset about it because um, I I've, I've really enjoyed that that company and having her in my life like she was kind of like a role model to me she, not only did she not talk to me you guys i'm talking like i would walk in a room and she would look at me and she'd be like Ugh. and walk out of the room shit you not i never got the opportunity to go up to her and confront her and i really wish i would have and it, and it's really frustrating because it's like you don't know like yeah I'm, did you ask me what happened did you ask me like what my charge was or want to hear my story or want to know that that was years ago and that I'm not even that same person and nothing like she literally just cut me off right so the same thing kind of happens to me also with like a applying for jobs applying for houses um basically anything that you can think of um as an adult it's there okay so being a felon is so you know, if I have to apply for a job, I have to check that box. But uh, the nice thing is I, I haven't had a problem getting a job because I'm a waitress. But I, I talk. I literally will just go in and talk to the manager and, like, let them know the what happened and let them know my story. And, um, you know, and just be like, yeah, this is, you know, this happened, but this is in the past. I've, you know, been on the straight and narrow for six years blah 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 and you know I never have an issue like getting a job and it's because I let them meet me face to face the only times I've had issues with getting a job is if I have to check that box and I don't get to talk to someone face to face and they just get to read my resume and they see that box checked and then they just toss it in the garbage and I have had that happen and I've had to call the places and be like can I talk to your manager and then I they're like oh I didn't even get your application it's because someone below them saw that and just tossed it rather than giving me the opportunity to speak for myself or to meet me or know me in any way. And same with housing. Housing is even worse, okay? So when we got this house, I had to, you know, we met with my landlord and I had to tell him everything. And they're always, like, hesitant at first. But then when they see my, you know, my kids and how everything seems normal, I guess, to them, then then they're like, oh, okay, but they're always really leery, and they're always like, ooh, like, ooh, you know, and it's like, I'm not, it's so frustrating, you know, like, I have to live with that for the rest of my life, and not only that, but for three years of my life when I was incarcerated, I was a number, I was not a person, I'm still feel, I, I still feel like a number, I'm, I'm, I'm constantly, like, I, even though I am completely not doing nothing wrong, okay, I will be driving, and I'll, like, see a cop car and I will think I'm doing something wrong just because of the way I've been treated for so long. You know, like, I'm just, like, you just get so nervous because of the way police have treated me, the way that the Department of Corrections has treated me. I just feel so on edge and I'm just a number to them. And sadly, that's everyone else that's ever been charged with the crime that's you know, in the Department of Corrections, they are just a number. You are just a number. You are just a, a little envelope this big with paperwork in it. That is all you are. You are nothing else. Nothing, okay? You are not a human being. You will not get treated like a human being. You will not be, like, you can't, ex you know, have emotions. or any, Like, literally, it's do this, do this, do this, jump through all our hoops. If you don't do everything X, Y, Z, dot your I's, cross your T's, you're fucked. Like, they don't care at all. Uh, and it's and it's messed up because sometimes, like, some guy, some people can get away with everything. And then other people, like, they slip up a little tiny bit and they're, boom, back in prison. You know, it doesn't make any sense. I would understand it if they were strict like that with every single person. But they're not. They are all over the place and it's frustrating. Another thing, um, which I'm going to open up about a little bit. So when I started dating my husband, um, when I had my accident, 
um, six years ago, it was a car accident, and obviously I was in the newspaper, and they made it sound horrible when it, I mean, it was a car accident, and I'm not minimizing my crime, what I, what happened was wrong, and, and I will forever feel bad for what happened, but you know how media is, you know how the outlets work, they blow it up and make it crazy sounding, so when I started dating my husband, um, his sisters and, you know, everyone were like, isn't she the girl? Like, one of his sisters literally came up to me and asked me, aren't you the girl that, like, murdered somebody? What? No! I got in a car accident and a girl got her arm broken and it's very sad. That's so sad she got her arm broken. I didn't murder anybody. It's just, that that's what it's like. Word of mouth media and it just flows through right so then i'm like dating my husband and they're like i'm afraid his family thinks i'm like some crazy criminal but it ended up not being like that i just had to like you know they got to know me and i had to like let them know like what my whole journey and like now they are so loving and so accepting and they i don't think they ever once ever worried i think it was more of like obviously it's your son and then like you know, he's dating some girl who got in a car accident and was in the newspaper. Like, that's a little concerning. As a parent, I might be a little concerned. But, you know, they, they, it's, you know, their son's a grown man and they let him do his thing. And then when they notice we, in, we are in love, and th then they, they, they took me in as their own. And they're an amazing family and they are so supportive and loving. And they don't look at me as a criminal at all. But when you, when I first started dating my husband, I, I was terrified of that because I just wanted them to accept me. I just wanted them to, to not see me that way, you know? So it was really scary, especially when one of his sisters, like, said that to me. I was like, oh, my gosh, like, do they all think of this as me, you know? But they don't at all. And it's just um, poor miscommunication and poor uh, – I don't even honestly know how, where or how she heard that um, – how it went from a broken arm to murder, I don't know. But still, it's you, you just have to explain your story and tell people what's what you're what you are on the inside and that's what matters. And I just really hope that by sharing these little tiny stories and explaining a little bit about my past that um I can maybe encourage people and maybe educate people that um your race or your, you know, your criminal background or you being an, an ex, an addict and living in recovery, that doesn't make you a bad person. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't give anyone the right to judge you ever or have some sort of stereotype put over you ever. It's not okay. And you should stand up for yourself and you should let people know, hey, um, <laughs> thanks, um, let people know, hey, like that's a stereotype or that's a stigma. And, I, you know, it's 2020. Let's knock it off with that shit, please. Like, I'm fucking sick of it. I know all of you are probably fucking sick of it. Let's knock the bullshit off. OK, like I am just because I'm a, just because I made a mistake in the past and yes um I am a recovering addict uh it doesn't not mean that I'm a horrible person and that you know when you see me you're like oh my god she's just a crackhead no actually I haven't done any sort of drugs in almost 7 fucking years so fuck off okay I'm living in recovery and stick it to the fucking man okay and that's it like that lady that I was telling you about in the church, that hurt me so much to where I have such a guard up now to where when I meet people and they, like, judge me at all, I'm like, I can't, you know? Like, you either accept me for me or you aren't worth my motherfucking time. Like, period, point blank, okay? It's so frustrating. Like, I don't have time for your petty shit. I really don't. I don't. If you want to sit there and judge me based off of a stigma or a stereotype that you think based off what society has conjured up into some bullshit in your head, that's on you, okay? Not my fucking problem. 
point blank period, not my motherfucking problem. So if I, if you are living in a stereotype or living in a stigma, put your head up high and know that that's not you. That stereotype is not you. That stigma is not you. And all of those people can go suck it because that's not who they are. At, you are at all. And we need to peacefully, keyword here, peacefully change. Make a change. Show people. I don't know how to explain it any other way, but this is my only way I know how to show that there's a there's something different there than just a stereotype of a felon, of uh, an addict. Yes, I'm the face of an addict. Yes, I'm a felon. Those are two stereotypes, two things that people hear and say that are horrible, right? They're not horrible to me. They are who I am. And that's me. And that's okay. And if you don't like it, then I don't really care. Really, I don't care. So I just hope that this helps someone if they're watching this and just know you're not alone. And there's so many people out there who live this day by day. I mean, every day. Violence and acting out and it just doesn't help the situation. Um, yeah, violence only feeds the stereotype. It does. Reacting with violence to violence will not solve violence, okay? It won't. I know you're frustrated and I know that it's so hard, but literally violence doesn't solve violence. It will never work. Honestly, acting violent and getting crazy only makes those people think that they're right. They're like, see, look. Don't let don't give them the benefit of the doubt. Don't let them see that. Don't let them get to you. And I know it's hard because trust me, it gets to me sometimes, but I will go home and bitch about it to my husband and I'll go home and bitch to it to my friend and and I'll complain about it, but I don't ever explode and freak out and give them that. I don't give them that ever. Like you'll never get that from me. It's not worth it. And violence does not answer violence, ever, okay? But I know this live is like 20 minutes long already, so I should probably go unless you guys want to hang out. I hope one day things change for sure. I hope so too. I just hope that people can, we can all just be one. Like everyone, I know that's like a far reach, but I just hope that everyone can just move past this shit because it's so exhausting and it's so overwhelming and it's like honestly seems like it's getting worse and worse and I know that everyone's like cooped in their houses and shit's getting a little crazy and like so now everything is just escalating like 2020 can just stop like 2020 go 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 we don't want you anymore like bye please like I don't want 2020 anymore I just want 2021 but that means I'll be 30 but I will take that okay I will be 30 for you guys if this year can just be over okay <laughs> Like, I'm over it. But, uh, sorry, I didn't read your comment. That shit makes me so mad. Someone once told me that there was no way Aaliyah could be mine because she's so dark and looks nothing like me. How does that even make sense? And it needs to be fucking said. I'm so angry with this shit. Yes. If someone were to ever... Oh, my God. See, I can't... I don't understand how you can say even deal with that. But I'm sure you didn't, like, act out in violence and, like, punch them in the face, you know? But that's, it's like, how do people think that that's okay to say those things? Like, you're going to go up to a mom and her baby and be like, that's not your baby. She's too dark. Or, Who the fuck are you? Like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I, I'm, I'm flabbergasted at that. Like, that's crazy. I can't believe it. I mean, I, <laughs> my kids are the same color as me. And they're like, my kid, they're like, your kids don't even look at you like you. And I'm like. I pop both those out of my vagina, okay? So, fuck you. So, I can't even imagine what that feels like. Like, oh, it's so frustrating. Like, people just need to shut their mouths. And I'm sorry, but it seems like, seems like it's a certain generation or a few generations kind of conglomerated together who have this, like, weird mentality that, like, has not gone away yet. Like, can they just stop now? Can we, like, roll in and 
chill out? Like, why is it still going on? You know, like, oh, yeah, all because she's black. Aspen says all because she's black. My best friend Aspen is white and she married a black man and they have a beautiful mulatto baby. And what the hell? Like, why is that so wrong? She was so worried. I don't I don't know if you care if I talk about this or not. Shut me up if you do. But they came to visit us a few months ago and she was so worried about going out in public. Like because where they live, it's very 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 white. So they uh get looks and all kinds of shit and um and get and it's fucked up. So I told her I was like, you know, it's better here. I mean, it's still Montana, but it's better here. And uh, she was really, really happy when they came because we were able to walk through the mall and walk through, you know, the shields and nobody looked twice, you know. And I remember sitting down in the food court and she like looked at me and she's like, dude, I want to move here. And I, she's like, no one's looked at us like once. And for my best friend to like say that to me, knowing that that obviously happens enough where they live. To where when they come here, it doesn't happen. Hi, Mel. Thanks for coming. Um, so it obviously, like, she's out and about with her husband and their daughter. Just being a family. And people give them ugly looks and stereotype them and make them feel like like they're watching. Them. Like, it just... And for them to have that so constant to where when they come to visit, they don't see feel it or see it. That you know, that's a problem. Like, that's an issue. It was so nice. No stares, no stereotyping. It was amazing. Yeah. Um, where I live, it's a lot better than where you live. Um, but in Montana in general, it's a very, very, very red state. Um, and it's a white, very white, um, red as in like Republican. I'm, I'm sure you guys know that, but, um, yeah, that's how I feel too. Like, you know, when I was in pre-release, anywhere I would go, like, when I first got there, my first two weeks, I would go in to, like, apply for jobs, and I was, like, you know, I'd have to, like, say, yeah, I live at the pre-release, and people would literally just, like, not even, like, they'd be, like, okay, bye, because the other, this is what's frustrating, is because a few bad people, a few bad people can make it bad for everybody else, you know what I mean? Like, a few bad people did some fucked up shit, and now... They make it horrible for all of the other people who were, like, under that same kind of category, I guess. Like, I don't know how else to explain it, but do you know what I'm saying? Like, a few people in pre-release did some fucked up shady shit, and now the rest of us going through the pre-release after them, they ruined it for all of us. And it's like, I just can't even talk. Like, I'm so jumbled. I'm so frustrated. But, um, oh, I miss you too. I just feel like, I'm I'm sure, like, even Christina can probably relate to it a lot, too, living in Mexico, like, you know, and it's just, I'm sure everyone right now in this chat, at some point, has gone through stereotypes and dealing with people judging and thinking that they have a right to have anything to say in your life or anything, like, it, it literally blows my mind, like, I have never, ever looked at someone and been like, like, I just, I literally, I'm just not that kind of person. Like, the only time I've ever looked at someone is, like, if I'm, like, oh, my gosh, like, that outfit's a questionable. It's, like, about fashion. Like, and I'll just, like, tease about fashion. But, like, nothing about who they are as a person or anything about their background. Nothing, you know? I, I think it's wrong. It's not your place. And you have no right ever judging on someone or, um... I don't know how to explain it, but that stuff in Minneapolis, you guys, like, that's a whole nother level of fucking crazy that I just am, like, I'm just flabbergasted by that. And then that crazy cuckoo lady in New York, like, are you insane? Are you insane? Did You had to say African American? Like, you couldn't just say there was a man harassing you? Oh, it's just crazy. It's crazy, you guys. Like... I, I, it frustrates me, like, I can't even, like, watch it, like, it just, I'm like, ooh, uh, why, she frustrates me, that lady in New York, like, pissed me off, you guys, when I watched that video, I was like, are you fucking kidding me, and then, you know, the Minneapolis thing, I can't, don't even get me started, let's not even talk about it, because if I go off, you guys, I will go off, and then I'll probably have, like, a thousand hate comments, because 
I think it's fucked up. I'm sure I won't have a thousand hate comments, but I'll have people being like, you don't know because you're white or something, you know? Like, I know, I'm white. But it's still, I think it's fucked up. Like, I, I'm just, because I'm white, I still care. Just because I'm white doesn't mean I'm not going to fight. Like, you know what I mean? No doubt. I'm sure everyone feels it in one way or another. It's sad, dude. Yeah, it's fucking sad. And that video of that lady had my blood boiling. Mine too! Fuck, man. Alright. I better go, you guys. It's 2 in the morning. I just wanted to get on and, like, vent a little bit and explain, you know, I live in a stereotype every single day and with everything going on in the world, there's so many stereotypes going out right now and people need to center back and get back to where we were I mean I felt like it was kind of getting okay for a little bit kind of I I feel you a hundred I hate it when people say Mexicans do this do that but at the end of the day so do white people so do blah 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 everyone every other race there's bad people it has nothing to do with the color of their skin yet it's like that It's like that that gets African-American men killed. She said he was being aggressive, and he wasn't. And then the cops show up thinking he's crazed, and he's not. And that's when people get killed. Exactly. And like what Christina says, it does not matter what color of your skin. It does not matter if you're an addict or a felon or whatever, you know? Like any of your your criminal past or the color of your skin or how how you grew up or who your grandpa's uncle's mommy's money like none of that fucking matters none of it matters what matters is who you are on the inside and how you portray yourself to other people in this world be the best you you can be be anybody like be who you would want other people to be treat people the way you would want to be treated point blank period i know that's an old saying but treat people the way you would want to be treated that's it's that easy like if some like if i see someone having a like a hard time I, like if i have a, like an old lady i will try to help her you know i'll just try to help her I'll offer her groceries and she'll be shocked she'll be like no one's ever done that or i haven't had that happen in years it's like what happened to that kind of shit what happened to people helping the elderly or just or you know not judging and just letting people do their thing like even for as moms like as moms like my son had two meltdowns today in the store so bad to where i had to take him out to the car twice and there was people looking around because like you know i like was i had him up close to me and i was like you need to knock it off stop screaming and stop hitting me i'm talking to him like a low tone voice talking to him like please stop hitting me Because he was hitting me, screaming at me. And I had this lady looking at me like, What, bitch? You got a fucking problem? Ugh, you know? Like, ugh, that made me so mad. I'm trying not to cuss in this live, so sorry about that. But it's like, mind your own business, okay? I'm a good mom. I'm good to my kids. You don't, you want to deal with him? You want to take him freaking out? Be my guest, you know? We get judged constantly. We get these stereotypes constantly. The stigma over your head like you're just some crazy addict felon. It's not, I'm over it, dude. I'm over it. And I can't wait to start telling my story and getting this going and just changing shit because I want to make change. I want to make I want to make a difference. I want people to know they're not alone and I want people to know that it's possible to move on with your life and get and get there and even though it seems like the whole world is against you and it seems like no one can no one's backing you up or the and you know all these people are judging you and and hating on you and it's we can get through all of it you can you can get through all of it i did it so you can do it i promise stare at me for punishing my kid i'll punish you too (laughs) call a bitch out people have gotten so self-centered and want to be the center of attention and will say anything just to get the spotlight for a second even if it means shaming other people i hate stigma people need to stop for a second and realize how their judgments impact impact others 
Yeah. It, it, it's exactly like that. Like, for, be, okay, think before you talk, you know? Like, before, like, okay, yeah, you briefly thought about that. Well, think about it. Oh, maybe I shouldn't fucking say anything. Maybe I should just shut my mouth and walk away, you know? Be the better person. Treat people the way you want to be treated. It's that freaking easy. It's that easy. I just spilt my tea all over my shirt. That's freaking gross. All right, ladies. Well, I'm going to go. But thank you for letting me rant. And thank you guys for being on the chat and conversing with me. And I'm glad that we all agree. And I hope that things can get rolling. And I hope this stuff can get taken care of correctly. People need to get charged. And people need to learn their lessons. And people need to learn from this. And no, it's not okay. So I'm going to go. I love you guys so, so much. I love you. 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 And I will see you guys on the next video. It's going to be my camping vlog this Saturday. And it's so awesome. So, yeah. I will see you guys on Saturday. But I will talk to all of you three later. Okay? Bye.